Demetrius this morning. Well, if you have your Bibles this evening, turn with me with the book of Luke chapter 24 and the 49th verse, the words of Jesus right here. My Lord, I tell you, we need an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival. The church needs to receive the promise of the Father tonight. My Lord, we don't, the many don't even think about the promise of the Father no more. They ain't got no concern. They're satisfied. But listen to the words of Jesus right here. These words right here in Luke 24 and 49. At, right before his ascension. And behold, I send the promise of, the, of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Let me read that passage of Scripture again. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Tonight I want to speak the thought of you need to receive the promise of the Father. Heavenly Father, tonight we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, dear God, uh, to be in your house and another opportune time for to minister your word. Uh, tonight I ask for your divine anointing upon my lips to speak your words, dear God, tonight. Lord, give me the words that you would have me to speak, O God. Anoint the ear of the congregation to hear this word. Lord, let it sink into their ear, dear God, tonight, Father. Lord, I just ask you, Lord, to stir hearts and lives and individuals. Move upon those that need to be moved upon those, those that are in a status quo, that are satisfied in their walk. God, tonight I ask you, Lord, to stir them, to prick them. Convict everyone in here of their walk with you, Lord, to let it grow a little bit longer, grow more in their walk, God, to desire more of you, O oh Lord. Lord, we give you glory, God, and praise and honor in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I've got everybody knows about my little girl. Well, let me tell you, this daddy right here makes promises to her that I will do anything in the world to, to keep. When she asks me for something, and if I tell her I promise that I'll do it, can I tell you that I'll do it, take go to all of my resources to fulfill that promise to her? I will go however it has to do to fulfill that promise that I made to her. Even though I know that I am limited in many ways to give her everything that she would want, the things that I can do for her, I'm going to give for her because I had promised her. And let me tell you just a little secret. A couple of years ago, I told her anything you ever needed. Well, she, she ain't forgot that yet. She's took that to whatever she's wanted, but that's all right, too. You see, I try to fulfill those promises that I make to her. And on the other side of the spectrum, there's some daddies, there's some fathers out there tonight who just do not keep promises. Think about the majority of politicians that during the election cycle, they'll make many promises. They'll tell you all of these things that they're going to do, but it's all of a sudden, right after they get elected, all of a sudden they forget about these promises they made or come up with reasons why they cannot fulfill those promises. All of a sudden, they conveniently, if you will, forget those promises. But I want you to know tonight that our Heavenly Father is not limited in, his prom in fulfilling uh, His promises. I want you to know tonight that He's not slack concerning uh, His promises. I want you to know tonight that He has not forgotten His promises. I want you to know tonight that God has not lied concerning his promises that he has made in his word. In fact, 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 tells us, For of all the promises of God in him 
or yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. And one of those great promises tonight is found in the closing chapter, in the closing last few verses of the book, book of Luke. When Jesus spoke those words, and, I will, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with, for, with power from on high. Jesus was speaking of the outpouring and the coming of the Holy Spirit and the promise of the Father right there. And just as the disciples needed to receive that promise, this last day church is indeed of an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. This church in this last day, the body of Christ, needs as much as the power of the Holy Ghost as we can receive today. We need as much as God as we can get, and you can get all that you want tonight. My Lord, in fact, let me tell you, Jesus told his disciples right here, and he told them in the book of Acts chapter 1, he told them to tarry in the city of Jerusalem. You see, earlier, Jesus had given them a great commission. In fact, in Matthew 28, 19, and 20, he told them to go into the world and teach all nations in baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. Um, let me tell you right there the task that Jesus had set forth until his disciples would not be an easy task. In fact, when you begin to read the book of Acts and you begin to study the life of these disciples, you will find out uh, they, their, their ministry, there was opposition. They faced all types uh, of opposition. They would face a real devil along the way. Uh, they would face hardships and be jailed. Uh, they would have a great scope to the task, um, and there was a great sense of urgency uh, to fulfill that task. Uh, in fact, the disciples uh, needed power. Power. When you look at the day that we are lent in and you look at the hour that we are living in and I'm telling you tonight the church needs that power. The church needs that power that Jesus sent on the day of Pentecost. The church needs that power that he talked about right here in Luke 24 and verse 49. It needs that old time Pentecostal power. It needs an out pouring of the Holy Ghost. Uh, my Lord, if you ain't seen the opposition today that we are going in, uh, we're going in a time right now where I believe that we are as believers that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24. Uh, he said you will be hated by all nations uh, for my name's sake. Uh, if you don't see it uh, happening, it is happening right now before our very eyes. Uh, there are false prophets that are rising. Uh, if you've not known who Louis Farrakhan was. He is the leader of the nation of Islam. And let me tell you, Islam is making roads into our government. Well, this leader of Islam just come out and said he was Jesus Christ. He was the Savior. He was the Messiah. He is not Jesus Christ. He is a false prophet. But my Lord, we begin to see all of these things that Jesus spoke about that would be taken in place uh, right before he would come today. Uh, we begin to see, though, that there's opposition uh, that is rising against the men and women of God. Uh, there is opposition that is rising against the church. Uh, and if there's ever been a time uh, where the body of Christ needs to be empowered, uh, we need that old-fashioned Holy Ghost power right now. Uh, if there's ever been a time where we need the promise uh, of the Father 
where it is right now. And if there's ever been a generation that needs to see Pentecost, this generation right now needs Pentecost. This community needs a Pentecostal church. Your job needs somebody that is full of the Holy Ghost. Your family needs somebody that is full with the power from above tonight. My Lord, can I tell you that the Holy Ghost is there tonight? Can I tell you he is still being poured out? He is still there tonight. He is still pouring his spirit out upon all flesh tonight. Let me tell you, Jesus would not let those disciples go out and preach revival, build churches, witness, or attempt to carry out the work of God until they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. It's the reason he told them, you go to Jerusalem, you don't start the mandate right there, but you go there and you begin to tarry. You wait there until you be endued with that power from above. He didn't send them out the very moment he told them to go in the world. No, he told them to go to Jerusalem. He told them to go and wait for the promise of the Father. He told them to go and wait until they be clothed with, with the power from above. So what are you saying tonight? They were to wait for the promise of the Father. They were to tarry uh, until they were clothed with that power from above. Uh, but I want you to know tonight, uh, you do not have to tarry uh, for the promise of the Holy Ghost tonight. Uh, let me tell you the reason you don't have to tarry no more. Because in Acts chapter 2, uh, the Holy Ghost came. How many know uh, in Acts chapter 2 uh, that he came? Uh, in Acts chapter 2, uh, the fulfillment of Joel uh, was right there uh, in Acts Acts chapter 2, uh, this one that Jesus said, the promise of his Father, uh, came on the day of Pentecost. Uh, that one that Jesus said, I won't leave you comfortless. Uh, I will send a hit one. one. Uh, I will send a comforter. Uh, had come. Uh, the teacher, uh, the helper, uh, the empower had come on the day of Pentecost. Uh, and my Lord, he came with a sound. Uh, he came with a sound of a mighty rushing wind. Uh, and cloven tongues of fire set upon them come upon them that sit in the upper room my lord we're going in we just finished the resurrection season and now we are approaching Pentecost we are coming into the day we'll celebrate come celebrating in the book of month of May the day of Pentecost let me tell you how many in here want Pentecost how many in here want an outpouring of the Holy Ghost let me me tell you if you want the baptism of the Holy Ghost uh, you got to go through Calvary in order to get the Pentecost how many know that tonight uh, let me tell you this evening uh, that the Spirit of God uh, came on that day uh, he's still here today uh, he's still baptizing in the Holy Ghost tonight uh, upon those uh, that want a move uh, of God my Lord are you awake on me you see, Isaiah t told us right here. He said in Isaiah 44 and 3, he said, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessings upon thy offspring. Let me tell you what it tells me. You don't have to tarry no more. Can I tell you but why? You let me tell you the Holy Ghost has come. You can receive the promise tonight. Why? Because at Pentecost he had come. What you saying preacher tonight? I'm telling you if you're thirsty and you want to drink of that water he'll make rivers of living water flow from you tonight amen I'm telling you tonight you don't have to tarry tonight I'm telling you the promises is here I've come by to tell the Houston Town Church of God that the promise that Jesus spoke about is here tonight I've come by to tell the church of God that the, that the promise that Jesus said had come still here tonight Right. My Lord, you I may, may make you shout now, but I'm going to make some of you go out here in a few minutes. Amen. 
Amen? Because I'm going to preach something here in a little bit. But Pentecost came, that the Spirit came on that day of Pentecost. I'm telling you tonight, we don't have to tarry. We can receive it tonight. Amen? A lot of times people don't receive immediately. It ain't the Spirit of God ain't being poured out. We just don't know how to yield ourselves. Amen? People don't know how to yield to the Spirit of God or don't want to yield to the Spirit of God many times. My Lord, what you say in preacher, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is a gift tonight. It is a gift tonight. It would be like if I'd hold up a $100 bill in here and said the first one that comes and gets it can receive it. How many know most of you would be running out here to grab it? Amen. If you, listen, I'm telling you the truth right now because that's all you got to do is receive the gift that Jesus talked about. What are you getting at tonight, preacher? I, I'm telling you there's some in here that need to receive the promise. And there's some of you older saints that's been baptized. You need a refilling tonight. You need a fresh refilling of the power of Pentecost. My Lord, the church of God needs to get back to Pentecost. The Pentecostal church needs to get back to Pentecost tonight. We need to start preaching Pentecost again. We need to start preaching the baptism of the Holy Ghost again. You see, in this last day that we are in, we're living in an evil and dark day. But I want you to know there's still a power that is greater than Satan in this world. And it is a church that is full of the Holy Ghost. It is a church that is full of power. It is a church that is full of the Spirit of God. My Lord, we need that power. Some of you need to receive that power from above. Some of you need to receive that promise tonight. My Lord, I'm prophesying. There's going to be some people that are going to receive the Holy Ghost. There's going to be some people that are going to go down the road one day. And all of a sudden, and the Holy Ghost going to come upon them and he's going to put that language in their mouth and they're going to start speaking. My Lord, can I tell you, Pentecost is real tonight. I come by to tell you that we need the promise of the Father. You need the promise of the Father. These disciples needed that promise. They needed it, don't you think, that we need it tonight? Amen. Let me tell you why many don't seek the promise. I'll tell you why. Many ain't seeking this promise. And why many in our Pentecostal churches ain't seeking this promise. Sometimes it's not being preached. Pentecost ain't being preached in our church pews, pulpits anymore. But a lot of times, people are complacent. Did you hear me? They're complacent. They're happy where they're at. There's a lack of interest. They just do not want the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I'm convinced there's many that just want to go through the motions and go out the door. My Lord, I want as much as God as I can get. My Lord, I want everything he's got to offer me. Anybody else know tonight? I, ain't, I know you may be saved and you're on your way to heaven and I know that's the big one but my Lord can I tell you you need a promise from above you need a promise of the Father tonight I know being baptized in the Holy Ghost don't write your name in the Lamb's book of life but it sure does empower us tonight amen let me tell you if Jesus talked about it and Jesus told them he didn't suggest it to them he commanded to them to go and tarry and wait for the promise of the Holy Ghost. If God sent the Holy Ghost, don't you think we ought to be seeking what the Holy, what God had sent, the, what Jesus had sent the promise of the Father. My Lord, I think some people are more interested in showing off in church than getting close to God. Amen. I think some people are more interested in getting there, having a social gathering than they are getting close to God. I think there's some that just want to show their self off uh, instead of coming in here uh, getting where they need to be with the Lord tonight. Uh, my God, there needs to be some people uh, that need to get hungry for Pentecost again. Uh, there's some people that need to get hungry for a move of God again. My Lord, if you're coming in here for a social gathering, you come in here for the wrong reason. 
Amen. You come in here to be seen. You come in here for the wrong reason. Amen. My Lord. I tell you, people are complacent. They got pew syndromes. Let me tell you, the reason people are stuck on pews is because they ain't got no fire to them. You don't believe me? Let me light a match and stick it to you and see how long you stay at a pew. Sometimes I wonder that old, yeah, you get brought out a good point. What would happen if we let a squirrel go in here? May hear some things we don't want to hear. <laughs> My Lord, I guarantee you get some fire, you won't be sitting on the pew. You get some fire, you won't be complacent. You get some fire, you won't be just wanting to sit around in here and go through the motions. Amen. You get some fire. You don't want to have me a lay or lay me down to sleep. I give my Lord a, my soul to keep prayer. Amen. Amen. You're going to want more of Him. Amen. You get some fire. You're going to be moving. You ain't going to be idle. Did you hear what I'm telling you? Let me tell you the reason people are idle and they're complacent is because they ain't got no fire to them. They're complacent in their walk. My Lord, if the church is going to move forward in these last days, we've got to have that promise that Jesus spoke about. If the church is going to accomplish anything in these last days, we've got to have that promise of the Father that Jesus spoke about here in Luke 24 and 49. How many know that? Guess what? The church ain't going to accomplish nothing sitting around twisting their fingers. Amen? My Lord, we need Pentecost. I'm telling you, I'm looking for Pentecost to break loose next week around here. I'm looking for it tonight to break loose. But I'm going to get somewhere here in a minute. But I'm telling you tonight, there's some that need the promise from above. There's some that need to receive the promise from Christ. Of the Father that Jesus spoke about. And there's some tonight you've been filled, but you need a fresh refilling. I need a refilling every day. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I need Him every day. You can go days without talking to God, something's wrong with your walk. Amen. You can go days without being in the Bible, something's wrong with your walk. My Lord, there's times it seems like I may be out of it. You, I may see somebody and may not be paying attention to them because something's in my mind about a message that God has given me. You know what I'm talking about, Sister Debbie. There's times where God would drop something in me, a hunger. All my mind is on is the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody ever been like that before? Amen. I'm telling you today, we need to get a church that's got their mind on the Lord Jesus Christ and not the things of this world. Did you hear me? I'm tired of seeing churches look more like a nightclub than in the house of God. I'm tired of seeing women in skirts that is above them where it shouldn't be, be on stage that is inappropriate before the stage of God. I was watching on YouTube the other day or a video on Facebook somewhere along the way of a praise team somewhere. I don't even know where it was at. It disgusted me. The women were skirts above, these short skirts. I thought, my Lord, where have we come to? We've got away from the holiness of God and dress in decency before him. I said, not on my stage. Run them off of the stage like that. You see what I'm telling you today? Yes, we need to get back to that old-fashioned Pentecostal way. It was Jeremiah, God talking Jeremiah to get back to the old past. Did you hear what I'm telling you? Desire the old ways. Desire the old past. My Lord, what has happened? We've got so in love with the world that we're no longer in love with the things of God. We want to walk like the world. We want to talk like the world. We want to dress like the world. We want to look like the world. When are we going to want to act like Christ? 
I told you I was going to step some foots tonight, didn't I? Don't worry. He's got my back. Amen. My Lord, when have we got, a, we got away from that? My Lord, I think the word Inkabod should be written on some doors. Probably is. Amen. Sometimes you don't know if they're Pentecostal or whatever they are. Sometimes I looked at one one time. It looked like I was looking at a honky-tonk. Shook my head. Not on this day. Not in this preacher's pulpit. Watched them one time. I didn't know if I was at a rock and roll concert or a church house. Shook my head. Flesh. What it was. Flesh is what it all is. Let me tell you tonight. If the church is going to go where God wants it to go, we're going to have to get, get back, and we're going to have to have the promise that Jesus spoke about. My Lord, we're so worried about offending people, we forgot about offending God. Ooh, did I say that? We're so worried about pleasing people, we forgot about pleasing God. Amen? Amen? I'm telling you, Tonight, the church needs to recover. Pentecost, it needs to recover the old past. Because if we're going to move forth in the service of God, we're going to have to have a move of God. We've got to get rid of this complacency. We've got to get rid of this lack of interest. We've got to get rid of this desire to be like the world and in the things of the world. We've got to quit trying to imitate the world and start imitating Christ. Amen. My Lord, if you want to get how many want to imitate Christ tonight? Amen. Let me tell you, if the church is going to get back, we've got to get away from being like the world. We've got to get away from complacency. We've got to get away from being just coming through the motions uh, and a lack of interest. Uh, we've got to have that promise from above. Uh, we got to desire uh, the promise of the Father tonight. Uh, is there anybody in this house uh, that desires the promise of the Father tonight? Uh, is there anybody in this house uh, that desires the promise uh, that Jesus spoke about right here uh, in Luke 24 and 49? You can have it. Acts 1 and 8, here's why we need power. You're saying, why do we need this promise? Well, Acts 1 and 8 addresses that. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Let me tell you, I believe in speaking in tongues. Anybody else in here believe that? I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. I believe that the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the idea of speaking in tongues. I believe that. But let me tell you, the Holy Ghost is more than just speaking in tongues. It's more than just having some chill bumps. And I believe He'll make you run. He'll make you shout. He'll make you cry. He'll make you move. But I'm telling you, it is more than that. He is more than that. He empowers you for service in the kingdom of God. Did you hear what I'm telling you? I said he empowers you for service in the kingdom of God. In Matthew 28, we go back. Jesus told them what he wanted his disciples to do. In Acts chapter 2, he empowers them to begin to fulfill the service that God had called them to do. What are you getting at, preacher? I'm telling you tonight that if you want to get used by the kingdom of God, you we got to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. How many wants to destroy some devils? How many wants to make all of hell mad? How many wants to shut some drug addicts, drug houses down? How many wants to shut some prostitute houses down? Who wants to shut Planned Parenthood down? Well, I got an answer for it tonight. Let the church get filled with the power of the Holy Ghost again. And can I tell you his power? Power will let us destroy the works of Satan. My Lord, 
me tell you, I see the Old Testament story of Samuel. See, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit, you see him represented in many cases. He was there. He couldn't reside in men like he could at Pentecost, but he could fall upon men for certain tasks. And right here in 1 Samuel 16 and 1, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing, him, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Listen to what God told Samuel right here. He said, Fill thy horn with oil and go. Fill thy horn with oil and go. And I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. My Lord, here's the background of this text. Samuel was dejected and discouraged a little bit about Saul. He knew, but he knew it was hopeless with Saul. Because Saul had disobeyed God. He had rejected God. And Saul wasn't, having, wasn't truly repenting before it. It was obvious that God was no longer working with King Saul. But now, God was getting ready to raise up a new king. You see, Saul, Saul was always the people's choice. But now God was getting ready to raise up his choice, David. He said, Saul's already disobeyed me, rejected me. Now, Samuel, I want you to peel your horn, and I want you to go to the house of Jesse because I've got me a king there. Who that king was, as we know as the shepherd boy, David. Amen. So you're saying, what does it mean to fill the horn and go? Well, let's look what it meant in the Old Testament. When a man was anointed king in those days, God would tell the prophet to fill a ram's horn with oil. Then he would pour the oil over the man's head with the oil saturating his clothes down to his feet. The saturating of all, you could say, was speaking of the saturation of the Holy Ghost. My Lord, don't you think we need that saturation today of the anointing of the Holy Ghost to fill this church? I want to see it so strong that when you walk through these doors, you fall on your, fall on your knees before him as a dead man. How many know John the Revelator? When he come before Christ, he fell down as he was dead. Story of the Old Testament. Solomon's temple, when they built it, the glory of God was in there so strong that they fell down before him. My Lord, I want to see that anointing so strong that devils begin to tremble when they come in here. That they'll scream before they walk in here. I want to see that anointing so strong that they're lining the sick up to bring in here. Did you hear me tonight? My Lord, can I tell you, I want to see some people in here get saturated with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, can I tell you, that's what this, this generation needs today. Uh, it's what this church world needs today. Uh, it needs to get saturated uh, in that oil tonight. Uh, it needs to get saturated uh, in the promise uh, of the Father tonight. Uh, you see, all in the Old in the New Testament uh, represented the Holy Spirit uh, in the scripture. Think about what all will do for just a minute. It will penetrate. It will permeate. It will saturate. It will soothe. It will moisten. It will protect. It will lubricate. Oil will also purge and cleanse. Hello? And if it's burnt, its energy will radiate light. Some of you need to let the Holy Ghost do some cleansing. Ooh. Did you hear what I'm telling you? Hey, some need to let the Holy Ghost cleanse their filth out of them. Anybody know what I'm saying? Oh, you don't, people don't want to hear about it. There's a thing called sanctification. 
How many know the Holy Ghost to take things out of your life? Anybody know that tonight? These some people need to get saturated into oil where he can cleanse them. He quit thinking dirty thoughts. I could go on and on, but I'm not because I'm going to tell you right now. The church needs to get saturated in it. We need to let the oil saturate and cleanse us that we can burn bright again. I'm going to just tell you right now, the church don't need to be looking like the world. I'm afraid what is going on right now scares me to death. It disturbs me. Let me put it like this. This disturbs me when the culture is influencing the church. Amen? When the culture is influencing the church. Did you hear what I'm telling you? It should never be like that. Can I tell you tonight that the church ought to be influencing the culture? Amen? Amen? I'm not going to tell you the church don't need to be looking like the world. The church don't need to be acting like the world. It don't need to be living like the world. It don't need to be talking like the world. It don't need to be dressing like the world. It needs to be an appropriate, it needs to represent Christ. Did you hear what I'm telling you tonight? Let me tell you, we're not isolated, but we are separated. Did you hear what I'm telling you? Can I tell you tonight that we are supposed to be a separate people, a holy people, separated unto God? We ain't supposed to fit into this world, but we are supposed to stand out of this world and be a testimony my lord it's a shame when people claim to be Pentecost and old fashioned holy are more like the culture of this world than they are the one they supposed to serve there's been times God's put me in check there's been times when this sanctified hand Wanted to grab a hold of people. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And you'd get a hold of me and say, that ain't a representative of me. But God, I can grab a hold of them, then pray God to touch them after pray for you to heal them afterwards. <laughs> No, I would have been right either. I heard a preacher one time say, if they say that, and I said, I, it was funny, but it wasn't right. I said, I, I, told, I said, Lord, I could just grab a hold of him. Just give me two minutes. Then we can pray for him right afterwards. <laughs> but God said, no. There's been times he had put me in check. Anybody else he's put in check to? Hey, man, sometimes let me tell you this word comes to me before it gets to you. How many know that tonight? This word gets put in my spirit before it gets here. I get, see, you get me to preach to you. I get heaven to preach to me. Amen. What I'm telling you tonight is we need to get that light of burning. We need to let that oil cleanse us. We need to quit trying to look like the culture. We need to quit show, trying to fit into this culture. And we need to be the people that God has called us to be. Hey, I'm going to say this, and I, I'm not trying to throw off on no denomina other denominations or nothing like that tonight. Please don't get me wrong. But it's time for the Pentecostal church to quit try trying to act like other mainline churches and get back to Pentecost. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? It's try time to quit for trying to be dignified, if you will. We don't want nobody to mess our hair up tonight. Oh, preacher, don't pray for me. I just got a perm in my hair. I'm just using excuses. You may mess up my new shirt I got tonight. My Lord, we, need to, we don't want the Holy Ghost to move because we got a special speaker, come, somebody from the outside coming in. My Lord, they need Pentecost too. Amen. It's time for the Pentecostal church to start acting like a Pentecostal church again. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. I still believe in getting a little loud. I still believe in jumping a little bit. My Lord, one of these days I'm going to jump all these pews with these snakeskin shoes on. <laughs> My Lord, I still believe in getting excited. But I also believe we ought to look like a representative of Christ. The world ought to know that we are his representatives. Amen. Hey, man, I'm going to just throw it out. Hello. God, forgive me. But listen, I'm telling you, we need that promise tonight. And when we get that promise, I don't care what nobody says, when he's inside of us, he's going to reflect out of us. How many know that? Y'all ain't amen in me. Amen? I'm getting some toes tonight. How many toes have I got tonight? If I got any more, put your knees out there. <laughs> we'll kick him tonight. Hey, I'm for, I'll be 42 Friday. <laughs> Listen what I'm telling you. Oh, Pentecost is needed. The promise of the Father is needed. There's people that need to get saturated through Him. He's the one that pours the blood out on somebody's life. But moving on, because I got to hurry, I'm going to tell you this evening. We need to have that purging and cleansing. And we need to let that light, that, that light needs to be burning in this cold and dark world. You see, the need of this hour is not for shows. Amen? The need of this hour is not for concerts. The need of this hour is not for fun hours. Can I tell you the greatest need of this hour is the anointing. Amen? Amen? The greatest need of, this, of the church is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You see, in Isaiah 10 and 27, listen. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Acts 10 and 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Let me tell you, if you're going to accomplish spiritual tasks, you've got to have spiritual power. Amen? Oh, you cannot fight the devil in your own power. How many know that? I need power from above. Amen? Amen. The church, we're fighting a dark world right now. We're fighting principalities of this hour. Getting darker every minute. But let me tell you what we need to do. We need to increase the fire. We need the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's why you need the promise of the Father tonight. You see, men, machines ain't going to do it. Programs ain't going to do it in this hour. But what will do it is what done it in the book of Acts, what done it through in the book of through the church, early church, going on past Acts a little bit, is the anointing of the Holy Ghost tonight. What's going to do it in 2019 in this wicked world? It's not, it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit said the Lord of hosts let me tell you, it is the anointing of the Holy Ghost that will break the yokes of bondages. It will break the yoke of sin. It will break the yoke of sickness. It will break the yoke of poverty. Did you hear what I'm telling you? It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost that will break the yoke. I remember, it's, it's coming up on a year. It's hard to believe it's been a year. When I was over there going into Chambersburg Hospital, June, it'll be a year. I'll never forget those words that God spoke to me going through that big machine. I didn't know what they were going to find. But God spoke those words. The anointing is greater than your disease. 
Amen. Amen. I'm convinced the anointing will drive some sickness out. Woo. Anybody else know that? Amen. They told me over there, you're going to be in here for a while. We, I had about five or six things wrong with me. Septic all over. I didn't never told y'all how bad sick I was, but I wasn't going to. Because it would have been code to the doctor. No doctor, go to the doctor. I heard that anyway. I wasn't going to the doctor until I thought I needed to go. I finally, when I waited to about the last minute, but God, they said, you ain't going to be, you're going to be in here for a while. We can't tell when you're getting out of here. You're got dial, you going to have diabetes. Anybody told you that? No, and I'm not going to accept that. <laughs> that right there, three days later, them nurses kept telling me, you're going to have to take a you're going to have to take a shot. No, I'm not. Uh, let me tell you, look where I'm at tonight. Did you hear what I'm telling you? If you remember, I was down to about 130 pounds when I went into that hospital. Now I'm up to 177 pounds. And most of it ain't on my mouth either. <laughs> Some of you are thinking you probably carry an extra 200 on that mouth. That's all right. That's what God put it there for, for me to use it. Amen. Amen. But what are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you, it is the anointing. When the anointing is flowing, it will break bondages. It will break yokes. It will drive out devils. It will open blinded eyes. It will break the spirit of poverty. How many know that tonight? Let me tell you, that church is like that horn tonight that Samuel was the cat to carry. You know what that horn would carry? That horn was the container for the oil. How many know that? The, the horn was the container. And the church is the receptacle, the container, if you will, for the oil of the Holy Ghost. What are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you, the prophet had to fill his horn with oil. And the church has got to ask God to fill them to be the container that God wants them to be. Amen. My Lord, do we got anybody in here that wants to be a container tonight? Do we got anybody in here that wants to be a container tonight? Did you hear what I'm telling you? Let me tell you, we ought to seek the power of God. We ought to seek the anointing of God. We ought to hunger for Him tonight. Oh Lord, we ought to desire that anointing tonight. We got to be full. We got to be a container of oil, if you will. My Lord, I think I could preach all night long tonight. You see, let me tell you, Sister Marcy, you can get ready to come here in a few minutes. Jesus told them to be, to tarry right there in Luke 24. But in Acts chapter 2, they were free to go do what he called them to do. Why? Because they were full of the promise of the Father. See, here's another reason. You need power to go. You need power to go. Did you hear what I'm telling you? That is the commission of the church to go. God told Samuel to go. You need the power to go. That power is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Go and do what, you say? Well, preach the gospel. Amen. Heal the sick. Cast out devils in his name. There's what you are called to go. And that's why you need the promise. Did you hear me? See, I'm going to tell you, there's no a going church. We'll never sit around idle. Ooh, read it. My Lord, let me tell you, you can stand in here tonight. They were arrested in times. But you know what they prayed for? They didn't pray for God to set them free. 
They pray for the continuation of boldness to continue to preach what they got arrested for. Did you hear what I'm telling you? These days are evil. Everyone's standing in here tonight. Get you, get you down. These days are evil. We need that anointing. We need that power. See, in Acts 7 and 8, and Stephen was full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Why did Stephen do that? He was the elder of the deacon. Why did he, was he able to do that? Because he had the promise of the Father. Let me tell you, but for the church to be able to do that tonight, we've got to have the promise of the Father. You want to be used by God? You need the promise of the Father. For uh, this church and the church in general to become like Christ wants us to become, I'm telling you, we got to have the promise of the Father. I know there's some baptized in here. And there's some that God is using. But there's some that God wants to raise up and use even more. Amen. You see, the cry of this preacher tonight, and every preacher, should be saturate us. Saturate this congregation from the pulpit to the musicians to everyone on down with the promise of the Father. The cry of every believer tonight should say, saturate us with that promise. Saturate us with that promise. That promise come on Pentecost. And that promise is available to you tonight. How many would say, Pastor, I need that promise. I need that promise. Is there one said, Pastor, I need that promise. Anoint me. Fill me. Is there some that would say, Oh God, I got the baptism. I just need a refilling. I want a greater degree. I want a greater degree.